Hey all, Mark Slane with the United States Krav Maga Association. Um, video blog topic today is uh, America's getting scary. You know, I'm in my 50s and I, I've seen a lot, but I don't think I've ever seen America um, as hate-filled, as, as divided. Um, it's just crazy. You know, people openly calling for, you know, other people to be put to death. People from one race saying, you know, it's about time we start killing the other race. Um, thousands of tweets about assassinating the president. Shoot, after the Super Bowl, there were dozens of, of tweets about uh, assassinating Tom Brady for crying out loud. Um, I just don't ever remember it being so open. You're talking about killing other people. It's, it's just nuts. Um, you know, we're, we're so divided, we're put into groups. Uh, goodness, the, you know, the right calls the left a communist, the left calls the right Nazis. Um, the reason we, people do this is if you uh, put somebody in, into a group, uh, you can marginalize that group. You know, we all know Nazis are evil. You know, shouldn't it be okay to punch a Nazi in the face and have the moral high ground doing so? They're Nazis. Um, you know, if you go back to World War II, uh, the Nazis were putting, uh, you know, six million Jews to death. It would have been okay to wipe them out. It would have been a good thing to kill them. So, yeah, if you can say somebody's a Nazi in your head, an entire group of people, you know, marginalize them, you, you can... Um, be violent against them and still think you're doing right. You know, this is scary stuff. Um, it was Mark McYoung who, who had the quote that most uh, racists, because that's another big thing everyone's being called, uh, if you're truly a racist and someone calls you racist, you're going to be proud of it. Yes, I am. And that's, that's scary. These, these labels are put on people to, again, put thousands, millions of people in a group and then marginalize that whole group. That group's evil. I don't even have to listen to them. Their opinions aren't worth listening to. Um, this is scary. You know, the, the all blacks are, all whites are, all Muslims are, all Christians are. A, a rational thinking person doesn't do that. You know, I've got four kids, the slain kids. They're all four as different as can be. You know, if the four kids from my own loins are, are different, how in the world can all Christians, all Muslims, all white people, all black people, this is just um, horrifying to me. Um, lines are being drawn. You see the rioting and, and you know, protests that turn into riots. Um, crazy, crazy. So, you know, the, the advice I give my family, and hence I will pass on to y'all, um, we got to think a little bit differently. You know, first off, uh, first rule of self-defense is don't be there. Don't go to stupid places with stupid people to do stupid things. Um, again, I believe it was uh, Mark McYoung. I, I'm a friend of his on Facebook. If you don't know him, a prolific writer, self-defense guru, uh, certainly get his books. But he was talking about recently, sound like maybe before the election, his, his elderly mama, I believe he said she was in her 70s, uh, he asked her, what are you doing? She was going with some other elderly ladies down to the protest in, in California. And he's, you know, mom, 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 <laughs> why would you do that? Don't go to where there's likely to be violence. Because then when violence happens to you, what excuse did you have? Why did you go there? You know, if we're on a, a street and we see a group of upset people at the other end of the street, uh, we turn around and we leave. There's no reason to go see what's going on there. Um, you know, I've told my wife, if you see protesters blocking a road, turn the heck around and go the other way. You don't need to get any closer. If the road looks blocked, it looks blocked. Let's turn around. We can take a longer route. There's no reason to put yourself... Um, among angry people because you might be the one that they're angry at. You might be in the group that they're angry at. So absolutely, um, uh, don't be there. Don't go to places. You know, I don't particularly like going anywhere where there's people. Restaurants, they got to practically drag me to. Malls, there's no way I'm going there. Movie theaters, well, you know, that's what DVRs are for. I, I can watch that at, at home. I don't need to go to a movie theater. These places where there are large groups, A, it can certainly be a target if someone wants to do, you know, people harm. Uh, we think of terrorist attacks and that sort of thing. So, and B, if that large group of people suddenly is a mob that has one belief and you're on the outside of that belief, you're going to be targeted. Um, so, number one, don't be there. Number two, uh, get out, run. Um, get out any way you can. Uh, blend in. You know, if I suddenly am surrounded by a group, um, I'm taking off anything I'm wearing that says I'm against them. <laughs> and whether it's your Trump hat, your Hillary hat, if there's a group chanting something, I go along with them. I don't care what they're chanting, I'm with them. Yes, I'm one of you. Uh, until I can get the heck out of there. Now some of them, oh no, I've got pride. I'm going to have your pride as you're recovering in the hospital you know, for months because you've got every bone in your body broken. There's some horrible things going on. People setting people on fire, crazy things, crazy things. So absolutely I'm going to blend in. I'm cheering, I'm whatever the heck they're for, I'm for. Um, 
again, that's that's personally up to you. If you think, oh, I can't do that. I've got you know, I've got things I stand for. Well, stand for them. You know, the martyr for your cause, I guess. My family, uh, hey, we're with them until we can get the heck out of here. I don't care what they're cheering cheering for. There are some things I'm very much fundamentally against. Yeah, I'll be one of them for a while until I can get my family to safety. So this is just crazy. We've got to, uh, uh, again, one, don't be there. Two, run, get the heck out, find a way out. You know, um, wherever it looks like they're heading, you're, we're just kind of on the outside of that group until we can we can disengage and get the heck out of there. Um, no reason, if they're cheering one thing, for you to stand their ground and cheer the opposite. Uh, outnumbered is not a good thing. Um, Lastly, and this is way down the list, don't be looking for trouble, but when it's time to fight, it's time to fight hard. When it's time to go, it's time to go hard. Um, you know, I, I tell uh, people in my organization, I expect them as black belts to have a, a CCW. If they live in a, a state where you can get a concealed carry permit, do it. Why were weapons inv invented? Well, to give the smaller, the weaker, the, the, the less in numbers, to give them... Um, a fighting chance and we have to be able to do this we again uh, can't fight someone bigger stronger faster now suppose there's three of them now suppose there's ten of them how are you going to win that if not uh, a weapon so it's truly um, I certainly believe in carrying um, but training Train. Don't just have a weapon. You have to know how to use a weapon. One of my favorite memes on the internet was, uh, you don't need a $1,500 AR, you need a $700 AR, and $800 worth of training. And that's exactly how I look at it. Um, uh, you have to be very proficient with it. If you carry a knife, get good with a knife. There are some good courses out there, some good seminars. You know, I took a uh, I was training under Michael Jan Janich and, and some of his uh, head instructors. Absolutely, the USKMA, we have an offensive knife program. If you're going to use it, it's not magic. You have to know how to use it. Because guess what? The five thugs that are surrounding you, they all have knives too. Maybe they all have guns too. So you better be the best one with it. Um, you know, we in a blog a few weeks ago, it was the four variables of a uh, violent encounter, the attacker, you, the environment, and luck. We can kind of control our environment, stay out of bad places, but you never know where you're going to get stuck. Uh, the one you can control the most is you. It's really the only one you have total control over. Get in shape, get good training, get good training with a weapon, know what the heck you're doing. So, you know, here's, here's the advice again I'm giving my family. Don't, don't be there. Don't go to stupid places. Don't hang around populated places if you can help it. Um, run, hence get out any way you can. Blend in for a while if you have to till you can kind of disengage. And lastly, um, you know, make yourself a weapon, um, learn self-defense, um, be good with weapons, get some weapons training. Um, again, when it's time to go, be the most brutal one there, be the most violent one there. If you have to get your family through a group of people, you can't have to it. You know, there's just going off like a bomb uh, and being vicious. You know, years ago when people hadn't really heard of Krav, those that heard of Krav, my God, they would say, oh, that brutal stuff. Oh, it's not brutal, it's effective. I didn't start this. I'm not the, the idiot starting this stuff. But if somebody's trying to hurt you, you're not unscathed, you, you know, unless you're unscathed, to me, you didn't do it right. You know, Self-defense uh, isn't, yeah, I won, but then I had to go to the hospital and get stitched up, or I had four months of recovery, or I'll never use this arm the same again. Um, good self-defense is unscathed at the end, hence go off like a bomb, do major damage in the minimum amount of time, uh, get out of there and be safe. Mark Slane, United States Krav Maga Association.